how can we resolve some of these severe problems facing society when it's nearly impossible to conduct a sensible conversation with the activist class? Well, I think it's important to note that the activist class go out of their way not to have sensible conversations uh, because they were successful. If you go back, say, 50 or 60 years, you can watch um, BBC interviews and uh, television interviews with left-wing activists who are very reasonable and very uh, calm and level-headed and are presenting the best face that they can in order to inject these ideas into the discourse, their ideas into the discourse, in order to sort of separate people from the traditional way that they think. And this has been a very successful project because the people that they were dealing with simply weren't aware that they were being directly attacked by a set of very vicious ideas. And so now we have the blooming of this project into the sort of Marcusean radicalization of students to the point where they, they know that the power structure is behind them. The people running the institutions are already indoctrinated into this way of thinking. So they don't need to be polite anymore. They don't need to persuade you. They're going to just enforce this with whatever power they have available. Um, and so, frankly, I think that actually we don't need to worry about bringing them to the table to debate. What we need to do is worry about creating a positive understanding of ourselves and a positive framework that we would promote and just have as a more persuasive argument than the screeching hysterical transgender person who is telling you that you have to accept that they're a woman just because they've put on a dress. <laughs> Look, I would like to offer you my congratulations on your new child and ask, does having children change your perspective on history, politics and philosophy and the future of humanity? And if so, is part of the yeah. problem with the West these days the fact that a mostly young and childless generation is leading the decisions of civilization? I wouldn't say they're so young anymore, actually. The millennials are hitting 40 now. Um, so it's, uh, the, and I think that this is definitely something they're going to have to grapple with. Um, yes, having children definitely changes your perspective. Um, frankly, you realize how much of an adolescent you are until you have children, uh, because fundamentally it is about being responsible for someone who is not yourself. Uh, when you're an adult and you're just responsible for yourself, well, you can get yourself up, you can get breakfast, you can get showered, you can go to work, and then you can drink beer and play video games when you get back from work. And you can be like, well, I've, I'm, I'm a functioning member of society. But really, you're not, actually, because no one relies on you. That's the real test of adulthood. Who actually relies on you? And you realize you gain a much more mature and broad perspective on the world when you have a, a, a baby or a five-year-old or a 10-year-old who actually needs your help and you are personally responsible for that person. Uh, you realize that actually um, things are different and you have to see yourself in a, in a wider scheme of things. You aren't just an isolated individual anymore. You're actually someone who's part of a community, a part of a family, a network. And the stability of this network is very important. You don't want, the, the, the one thing that children need is predictability. They need to know that every morning when they get up, things are going to be as they were yesterday in order so they can be um, confident, happy, and self-assured. And so this is something that left-wing activists are deliberately trying to deny to children. They, with with the, the abolition of category is one of the primary methods of attack that the left take on. And you see this, of course, when you ask anyone on the left to define what a woman is. Now, a, a normal person will say it's an adult human female. I don't, don't know why you're even asking. But the reason that they're abolishing this category is so that anyone can be it. Well, that's actually bad for children because that takes away their ability to understand their own environment. That takes away their ability to generate this kind of predictable nature of this world around them. And it leaves them kind of lost, alone, and vulnerable. And that's how the left want these children to be in order to be able to groom them into believing radical things that clearly aren't true. Uh, and so it is... it. Family values absolutely 
should be at the core of any civilizational mission. And it's actually kind of wild now that you think, I, I, I'm not sure what the situation in Australia is like, but I'm going to guess it's not terribly different to what it is over here, where all you get to hear about are minority concerns, such as LGBT, immigrants, and uh, a radical fringe of man-hating feminists, right? I bet, I bet these topics dominate your politics at the moment. 